Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Tina. It's time for a daily devotional. Today, I picked a passage of God's words about where does life come from? We know that life can only come from God. But in this world today, we put a lot of dependence either on our parents or our children put dependence upon us. And we forget that life actually, it originates from God. Every person in this world, their life came from the from God, from God giving them the breath of life. And so there's a passage of words I want to share with you today about that. And there's also a hymn about these words I'm going to play at the end. So let's read God's words. God says, God created this world and brought man, a living being, unto which he bestowed life into it. Next, man came to have parents and kin, and was no longer alone. Ever since man first laid eyes on this material world, He was destined to exist within the ordination of God. The breath of life from God supports each and every living being throughout growth into adulthood. During this process, no one feels that man is growing up under the care of God. Rather, they believe that man is doing so under the loving care of his parents and that it is his own life instinct that directs his growing up. This is because Man knows not who bestowed his life, or from whence it came, much less the way in which the instinct of life creates miracles. He knows only that food is the basis on which his life continues, that perseverance is the source of his existence, and that the beliefs in his mind are the capital upon which his survival depends. Of God's grace and provision, man is utterly oblivious, And thus, does he fritter away the life bestowed upon him by God. Not a single one of this humanity that God cares for day and night takes it upon themselves to worship him. God only continues to work on man for whom he holds out no expectations as he has planned. He does so in the hope that one day man will awaken from his dream and suddenly realize the value and meaning of life the price God paid for all that he has given him, and the eager solicitude with which God waits for man to turn back to him. No one has ever looked into the secrets governing the origin and continuation of man's life. Only God, who understands all of this, silently endures the hurts and the blows that man, who has received everything from God, but is not thankful, gives him. Man enjoys all that life brings as a matter of course, and, likewise, it is a matter of course that God is betrayed by man, forgotten by man, and extorted by man. Could it be that God's plan is truly of such importance? Could it be that man, this living being that came from the hand of God, is truly of such importance? The plan of God is assuredly of importance. However, This living being created by the hand of God exists for the sake of his plan. Therefore, God cannot lay waste to his plan out of hatred for this human race. It is for the sake of his plan and for the breath he exhaled that God endures all torments, not for the flesh of man, but for the life of man. He does so in order to take back not the flesh of man, but the life he breathed out. This is his plan. Amen. Wow, this passage is pretty deep. (laughs) It's a really good passage of words, though. We can see that, you know, God created this world and he brought us into this, a living being upon which he bestowed life, right? And we came to have parents, relatives, and things like that. So we're no longer alone. You can see God's thought process in creating us. So we don't have to be alone. So we have companionship. Right, And God reveals that ever since mankind has laid eyes on the material world, he was destined to exist within the ordination of God. And we've forgotten about this, right? Because we, God is a spirit and we cling to what we can see, right? But the breath of life from God, it supports each and every living being throughout the, their growth of life into adulthood for their entire life, right? So man... During this process, no one feels that man is growing up under the care of God. We believe 
that we're doing so under the loving care of our parents because we can see them. We cling to materialistic things. We can cling to companionship. And, you know, we forget that God is the creator. And this is where God is actually pushed to the side. And we see that atheism has also come about where people don't even believe in God. So where do they think life comes from? God reveals that this is because man knows not who bestowed his life or from whence it came, much less the way in which the instinct of life creates miracles. Right? So as living in this world, we only know that we need food and water to be able to live. God reveals too that the beliefs in our mind are the capital upon which our survival depends. But we're completely oblivious to how God created all things and God's provision over our life. And God reveals too that not a single one of this humanity that God cares for takes it upon themselves to worship God. And I understand that from the perspective that we're always expecting something from God if we do believe in him. We believe in God maybe to gain blessings, but do we believe in God to actually know God, to be able to respect God, to fear God? Before I actually accepted the Lord's second coming, I would pray when I needed something or I was in a jam, but when things went well, I did. I forgot about God. You know, I just, I guess, took it for granted that he was there. And every time something went wrong, I turned to God and expected him to fix it. So I see that my belief was according to my needs, but not thinking about God's heart, how God suffers for mankind day and night and watches over us and leads us and guides us. God reveals it's only God who understands everything. And he silently endures the hurts and the blows that we put upon him. And people turning their backs upon him. Maybe somebody gets sick and somebody dies and or we misunderstand God and we start to put blame on God. An example of this too is, you know, some people look at the world and see all maybe the handicapped people or things that don't go well, the people that are suffering, and it's a blame put on God. It's not a blame put on Satan in any way, but it's always God. Why doesn't God fix this? Why doesn't God fix that? But not going into understanding why things are the way they are. Why, why are people like that? What would happen if God did fix it? Would it go back to just being the same? Right, so we have to really know God and understand God. So God endures this hurt um, from mankind, but God doesn't stop the work <laughs> that He needs to do. Right, God reveals it's for the sake of His plan and for the breath that He exhaled that God endures all torments, not for the flesh of man, but for the life of man, for us to be able to gain life, so we can hopefully awaken from this dream someday and realize that God is the creator and come back under God's care and protection and be a testimony unto God. So I find this passage as very touching passage of words. And I want to play this hymn that is actually in accordance with this passage of words, a hymn that um, is made out of this passage of words. So I hope you like it. So that's all I have to share today. If you want to share anything on this passage, if it touches your heart, please feel free to do so in the chat box. And um, we'll see you next time. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Bye. God created this world and brought men into it. A living being to whom God gave life.
Continue.